Today, I decided to simulate life that subsists off of Cheeto Puffs and see what happens. Now, I understand I could have just watched a college dorm to study such a lifestyle, but I wanted something that could simulate hundreds of years worth of evolution in seconds. And uh, unfortunately, I just don't have that time to uh, study the real thing. So here we are. These are my creatures, these are the Cheeto Puffs, and this is their goal. In the harsh world of not sharing, these little guys had to evolve to best suit their environment. I started by just creating a simple simulation without the complexities of evolution evolved, but we will get to that later. The idea is simple. Get Cheeto Puff, create offspring, get more Cheeto Puff, make more offspring, until eventually the production of Cheeto Puffs could not keep up with the ever-increasing population of the world and a mass extinction event occurred. Rinse and repeat. While this was still very fascinating to watch, it was far from perfect. It needed something more. It needed... I decided I wanted to uh, go easy with the first trait, and uh, then work my way up from there. So the first trait that these guys can evolve was speed, simple enough. It works like this. Every time a new offspring is produced, its speed is calculated by adding both of its parents' speeds together and then dividing by two. This way, it's perfectly in between its parents' speeds. The visual cue for the speed of a creature would be the color blue. So the more blue the creature, the faster it is. On the other side of that, the more kind of tan slash grayish the creature is, then the slower they are. I understand that's a extremely simplified version of how genetics works, but also these are 16 by 16 bit pixels that are eating Cheeto Puffs, so it's not uh, exactly the pinnacle of realism. From there, there is a small chance to mutate its speed, adding or subtracting to its own speed anywhere from negative to positive 10. The first creatures begin with a base speed of 50. Once I had it all set up, I ran the simulation a couple dozen times to try and get a decent sample size. The winner was decided based on who, after about a minute, comprised the majority of the world's population. These are my results. Sure enough, uh, I, which is what I figured and probably the majority of you, the faster the creature, the more likely to survive and reproduce. Now, interestingly enough, there was actually two distinct times where the slow creatures ended up conquering the world, but uh, these are just outliers and not really reflective of the true data. Uh, more interesting than that, perhaps, was that a colossal seven times the population either went extinct or was too closely tied to really call a winner, which, in a way, I guess is more reflective on the human species and how varied we are. Some of us are slow, some of us are fast, everyone loves Cheetos, but not everyone is the same. Which is what makes us unique. I think next time I do this I'd like to add some more traits. Uh, speed was the obvious one. But I think I would also like to play with the food detection and the uh, mate detection properties as well and see if I can kind of uh, mutate those as well and then see where that leads people. Basically, the more genes I add, the more complicated it gets and thus more reflective of true natural selection. Now something important to note is that I didn't add a downside to the speed variable, which is also not incredibly realistic. Uh, I think to make this simulation better and have more of a chance that the slow uh, gene would actually conquer the world more often would be to add a metabolism trait where based off of their speed, either they have to eat more often or less often. That way, the slower you are, the less you have to eat. Which again, would add just a whole other layer into the mix that I think could make it really interesting. So I think I might end up doing that in the future. Um, if I do, you'll, you'll know about it. And uh, yeah, thank you.